In today's ever-changing financial landscape, institutions face the challenge of securing their future while also meeting immediate fiscal demands. A proven solution lies in constructing a robust investment portfolio, and this enlightening audiobook is your ultimate guide to achieving just that. Embark on a journey of knowledge as you delve into the world of endowment assets and their potential benefits for your institution. Discover the intricacies of various asset classes available for investment and learn how to cleverly combine them to optimize your portfolio's performance. As you immerse yourself in this audiobook, you'll uncover the art and science of asset allocation, a crucial skill for institutional growth. Moreover, you'll gain invaluable insights into risk mitigation strategies that will safeguard your investments. Unravel the secrets of what makes endowments so invaluable to universities and other institutions, opening doors to a brighter financial future. Chapter 1, Empowering Institutional Autonomy, The Endowment's Role in Preserving Independence In the quest to master the art of institutional investment management, it is crucial to grasp the significance of investments, particularly endowments, and their profound impact on an institution's future. Let us unravel the essence of an endowment and its extraordinary implications. At its core, an endowment represents the benevolence of individuals or groups of donors who generously contribute to a university's welfare. One illustrious example dates back to the 19th century when Yale University received a substantial gift of 96 acres of farmland from an esteemed alumnus. The uniqueness of an endowment lies in the understanding that its principal capital remains untouched, with only the interest being utilized. This perpetual financial support endows the university with everlasting sustenance throughout its existence, making endowments truly invaluable. The real power of endowments lies in ensuring the long-term strategic independence of your institution. Too often, when financial aid is required, institutions are compelled to seek support from external sources. In the 1970s, numerous private American universities had no alternative but to turn to the federal government for loans and grants. However, relying on external financial backers comes with inherent challenges, as they often impose their own agendas and stipulations on how funds should be utilized. This compromises the institution's control over resource allocation and can lead to a loss of strategic direction. Government funds, for instance, came with strings attached, forcing universities to comply with various regulations and conduct research in fields dictated by the government's interests. On the contrary, an endowment allows donors to designate their contributions to specific areas of the institution, such as providing financial aid to students. Yet, as endowments endure for decades or even centuries, the influence of donors naturally wanes over time. Consequently, universities can utilize their endowments to safeguard their freedom and autonomy, free from external interference, and chart their own course. Chapter 2 – Navigating the Long-Term and Short-Term Priorities in Endowment Management In the realm of endowment management, institutions face a delicate balancing act between securing the long-term sustainability of their assets and providing a stable flow of funds for immediate needs. This intricate challenge presents a unique dilemma for endowment managers, requiring deft strategies to harmonize these seemingly conflicting priorities. The foremost objective of endowment managers is to safeguard the enduring purchasing power of the asset, ensuring perpetual support for the institution throughout its existence. For universities and similar establishments, the assumption is that operations will never cease, necessitating the preservation of the endowment asset indefinitely. A crucial consideration emerges from this scenario, the fair allocation of benefits between present beneficiaries, such as current scholars, and those of the future. Balancing these interests requires vigilant and strategic asset management to maintain the asset's value over the long term. Achieving this equilibrium entails deploying high-return investments, albeit at the cost of accepting elevated risk and potential market volatility. While this approach upholds the interests of future generations, it can sometimes collide with the endowment manager's other priority, providing consistent and sufficient financial support to the institution each year. Consider the scenario of a university following a stringent policy of preserving the endowment asset. Initially, only the annual returns of the asset, 
minus inflation costs, are spent to support the institution's operations. In a year with a 10% return and 4% inflation, a healthy 6% of the asset's value is distributed among activities, with 4% reinvested to offset inflation. However, the following year may bring heightened market volatility, yielding a mere 2% real return, coupled with a higher 7% inflation rate. This dilemma leaves the endowment manager with limited options, refusing to distribute any returns and reinvesting the entire 2% back into the asset, thus potentially compromising the institution's activities for that year. Chapter 3, Crafting Your Investment Philosophy, Embracing Three Powerful Portfolio Management Tools. As you embark on defining your investment philosophy, a set of guiding beliefs and principles to generate successful returns for your institution, consider integrating three indispensable tools that will shape and optimize your portfolio management. These tools hold the key to prudent decision-making and strategic wealth generation. At the heart of your burgeoning portfolio lies the first tool, asset allocation. This fundamental pillar involves meticulously selecting the asset classes that will comprise your portfolio and determining the proportion of funds allocated to each class. Notable asset classes commonly embraced by institutions include foreign and domestic equities, fixed income, real assets, and private equities. A comprehensive 2000 study by esteemed economists Roger Ibbotson and Paul Kaplan conclusively revealed that asset allocation decisions significantly influence the size of investment returns. The second tool that demands your attention is market timing. This dynamic concept calls for temporary deviations from long-term portfolio targets to capitalize on market opportunities. Imagine a scenario where your portfolio's target is to divide 50% of funds into bonds and the other 50% into stocks. However, savvy fund managers may discern that stocks suddenly present better value due to favorable market conditions, leading them to realign the portfolio with 60% allocated to stocks and 40% to bonds. The subsequent return on investment attributed to such astute market timing can be substantial. The final critical tool in your arsenal is security selection, which revolves around the choice between actively managed and passively managed portfolios. Passive portfolios mirror the markets, with managers refraining from active bets on market movements. Conversely, actively managed portfolios deviate from the market's composition, and the portion of the return on investment not aligned with the market can be attributed to active management. The level of market efficiency influences the choice between active and passive management. Highly efficient markets like government bonds typically favor passive management, whereas less efficient markets such as venture capital, real estate, or private equity offer greater potential for active management to yield significant successes through shrewd selection of individual assets. Chapter 4, Strategic Asset Allocation, a fusion of art and science in building your ideal portfolio. Crafting a truly effective portfolio requires a skillful blend of artful judgment and rigorous quantitative analysis. Your journey begins by selecting the optimal combination of asset classes, a pivotal step that demands bespoke considerations tailored to your institution's unique needs. Avoid the pitfall of following the crowd, as a non-controversial portfolio may not align with your institution's goals. Unlocking the potential of your portfolio hinges on including assets that promise equity-like returns. For institutional investors, this often involves a mix of domestic, foreign, and private equities, alongside real assets. However, mitigating risks associated with certain asset classes is equally paramount. To achieve this, diversification plays a crucial role, ensuring that each asset class is proportionally balanced between risks and potential gains. The question arises, how many asset classes should your portfolio encompass? While investors may differ in their preferences, some prudent guidelines suggest allocating no less than 5 to 10% of your fund to any single asset type, as smaller allocations may not significantly impact overall results. Conversely, investing more than 25 to 30% in any one asset class could lead to overconcentration and increased risk. On average, a well-functioning institutional portfolio typically comprises around six asset classes. Defining asset classes necessitates discerning differences in attributes such as debt or equity, private or public, liquid or illiquid, 
and sensitivity to inflation or deflation. Some assets, however, resist easy categorization. Fixed income assets, for instance, serve as hedges against fiscal uncertainties, but not all fixed income assets fulfill this role. It is essential to scrutinize how assets respond to critical variables to determine their classification. For example, traditional fixed income assets decline in response to unexpected inflation, whereas inflation indexed bonds increase in price under the same conditions, warranting separate classification. Chapter 5 Unveiling the Power of Traditional Asset Classes Navigating Market Generated Returns. At the core of defining asset classes lies the endeavor to bring together similar investments, creating a cohesive and well balanced collation. Traditional asset classes boast several defining features, primarily relying on returns generated by the market rather than active portfolio management. This characteristic grants them the advantage of providing substantial and dependable returns, instilling confidence in portfolio managers to fulfill their institutional mission. Markets in which traditional asset classes trade are characterized by breadth, investability, and depth, offering potential investors a vast array of accessible choices within resilient and well-established marketplaces. Among these traditional asset classes stands domestic equity, represented by ownership of shares in American corporations. For institutional investors, domestic equity plays a pivotal role in their portfolios, offering an expected return that aligns with long-term growth objectives. Historical data spanning 200 years reveal an impressive performance record, with American stocks delivering earnings of over 8% per year. A significant benefit of holding stocks lies in the harmony of interests between shareholders and corporate managers. As shareholders gain from increased shareholder value, corporate managers, too, enjoy financial bonuses when the company's profitability thrives. Moreover, in theory, domestic equity provides portfolio protection against inflation in the wider economy, with any inflationary impact reflected in higher stock prices, thereby enhancing portfolio value. However, it is essential to acknowledge that the stock market's response to inflation can vary, with short-term fluctuations occasionally challenging inflation protection. Chapter 6, Unlocking Growth Through Alternative Assets, The Art of Judicious Investment Explore the realm of alternative assets, where astute judgment holds the key to unlocking greater returns for your investment portfolio, albeit with a measured level of risk. By diversifying with alternative asset classes like real estate and private equity, you reduce your reliance on domestic equity and marketable securities, paving the way for a resilient and diverse portfolio. Alternative assets often boast more efficient pricing than traditional assets, presenting a unique opportunity for investment managers with superior judgment and in-depth market knowledge to substantially enhance portfolio value. This calls for active portfolio management, where skilled managers capitalize on market inefficiencies to drive returns. Delve deeper into one intriguing investment approach within alternative assets, the absolute return strategy. By holding positions in marketable securities that exploit inefficiencies and operate independently from traditional stock and bond investments, absolute return managers embrace calculated risk, skillfully mitigated through their expertise. These managers keenly observe current events and meticulously predict their impact on financial markets, ranging from mergers between companies to firms filing for bankruptcy. Such events create opportunities to acquire attractively priced securities, temporarily influenced by shifts in the legal and regulatory environment. Event-driven investors seize these opportunities, armed with a profound understanding of how events impact the valuation of corresponding securities. Conversely, uninformed investors often lack the knowledge to gauge the true impact of financial events, leading them to hastily sell securities in affected companies, including those of bankrupted firms. This mass selling creates an ample supply of distressed securities, enabling savvy event-driven investors to acquire them at favorable prices, with the promise of attractive returns. However, despite these lucrative prospects, event-driven investment strategies cannot fully shield investors from market shifts. There remains the possibility that a merger initially presumed certain may not materialize, leaving the investor holding an unprofitable position. Chapter 7, Striking the Balance, 
the art of portfolio governance for optimal returns. Discover the art of portfolio governance, where a meticulous balance of oversight and autonomy shapes a well-structured investment portfolio that precisely meets your institution's needs. In this enlightening journey, we explore the crucial governance process that fosters effective market timing and nurtures vital investment relationships. At the outset, institutions face a pivotal decision whether to embrace active or passive investment management. Opting for active management entails identifying skilled and knowledgeable managers capable of success, alongside substantial resource commitments. However, without the right support and capabilities, the outcomes often yield underwhelming returns. Alternatively, institutions lacking the necessary resources for active management may opt for a hands-off, lower-risk passive management strategy. Whichever path is chosen, portfolio management involves two key groups, the investment committee and the investment staff. The investment committee, akin to a board of directors, bears responsibility for the portfolio's overall strategy. Carefully evaluating recommendations from the investment staff, the senior team shapes decisions on asset allocation, spending policy, and more. The investment staff plays a critical role in building a robust intellectual foundation for their recommendations, ensuring informed investment decisions. As you design your governance process, it becomes essential to foster independent thought and contrarian attitudes within the investment department. Avoiding the pitfalls of groupthink, where consensus building stifles diverse perspectives, emerges as a particular challenge. The best governance processes proactively address this tendency, enabling investment management teams to embrace individual thought and critical analysis. Summary Achieving optimal institutional investments requires a delicate equilibrium between catering to immediate needs and safeguarding the institution's future. Crafting the perfect portfolio hinges on a precise assessment of your institution's investment expertise and available resources, guiding you towards choosing the most suitable path, active or passive portfolio management.